For several years, the Israeli government was forcibly administering birth control to a segment of its minority population. With doctors injecting Ethiopian Jewish women against their will with a contraceptive, Deprovera. But it wasn't until this January that a government official finally acknowledged it. One investigative journalist who interviewed 35 Ethiopian immigrants found that they were being intimidated and threatened into taking the shots, while being told that they were merely inoculations. But many speculate it was all part of a deliberate attempt to restrict an expanding minority in the country. You see, over the last two decades, Israel has experienced a significant influx of Ethiopian immigrants. But they're now being close to 130,000 living in the country. And while the government has finally put an end to this inhumane, insane population control tactic, the story has shed a light on a dangerous contraceptive that's now being pushed and administered on women of color all over the world, including right here in the U.S. So here to talk about the use of Deprovera and how this is targeting minority populations in both here and abroad, I'm joined now by Randy Short, President and National Spokesperson for the Anti-Deprovera Clergy Coalition. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. So Israel allegedly put, put this to an end. Um, can you talk about the, what you know about the health effects, though? Because obviously uh, women were being administered this for years without yes. knowing about them. Well, the drug was first patented in 1959. By the middle 60s, there were a lot of unethical experimentations done, in particular the Grady Clinic study in, in Georgia on poor black and poor white women. God knows how many people died. Uh, this drug did not get approved until 1993, 94, but during that time that was used on women all over. The effects of it are serious, excessive bleeding, osteoporosis, breast cancer, cervical cancer, heart attack, stroke, ectopic pregnancies, uh, excessive weight gain, which can lead to type 1 or 2 diabetes, short or long-term infertility, maternal death. Uh, it strips the epithelium, the inner part of the woman's womb, making her more susceptible to all STIs and STDs. Therefore, doubling the chances of getting HIV, AIDS, chlamydia, HPV, gonorrhea or syphilis and there are other things that bothers the mental health uh, one of the things that's come to us that uh, the group that I work with the Rebecca project is that many women are telling us that they've had mental problems uh, the FDA in 2004 was so concerned about the dangerous nature of Depo-Provera that they issued a black box warning, which is the most serious warning that can be issued by the FDA about how dangerous this drug is. And despite this warning, this black box warning, it's still being administered under multiple agencies to multiple countries around the world. Yes. Who is administering it? Why? And where? Well, it's being used uh, primarily in non-white countries. So Muslim countries, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Burma, possibly on the Myanmar minority, all over Africa, uh, Central America and Latin America, and of course the United States, depending on whose information you look at, it's disproportionately used on African American women. Who's doing it? Planned Parenthood is one of the big purveyors of it. In addition to that, you have the Population Council, you have the International Federation of Planned Parenthood, you have a lot of persons and groups that have a, a Malthusian view that there are too many people and therefore they want to reduce the population. They know this drug is deadly, it's cheap, and it makes huge profits for the parent maker, which is Pfizer. And USAID is also one of the yes. agencies as well. For 47 years, it's been an unofficial policy of the uh, USAID Office on Population to use or to send abroad dangerous, unsafe, untested, or unapproved drugs. And, and you said that this is being obviously disproportionately affecting minority populations. Yes. If they know that it's deadly, why would they be administering it to minority populations? I mean, what is really this all about here? There are too many non-white people. If you look at a gentleman by the name of Dr. Ravenholt, who was head of the uh, USAID Office on Population from about 1966 until 1979. He was able to first convince President Johnson that it was in the national and commercial interests of the United States that one-fourth of the women in the developing world be sterilized. 
So there's some sense that if there are too many black or brown people, that somehow their needs will conflict with the capitalistic and imperialistic aims of the United States and its allies. And there's been multiple lawsuits against Pfizer for the detrimental health effects from this drug, but they seem to be getting away with it and, and seem to keep, you know, direct-to-consumer advertising. That, well, how are they doing this? Well, they're making a lot of money. The U.S. Department of Justice has sued them in the last 10 years and fined them about $6 billion. But if you're making billions and billions, it's the price of doing business. But you have to understand, the people that are being steer towards this drug are poor, they lack uh, education and legal representation, and they're being tricked, so they don't know. Now, you have to understand, they, uh, Pfizer lost in Canada, they've lost in Europe, but they go to countries where they can't be sued. You can't sue from Nigeria here. Uh, you can't sue for Mozambique here, so you can go to countries where you either have a corrupt government structure or they're coerced, or should I say they've constructively manipulated into having this drug as part of their international foreign aid. Do you see what I'm saying? So the women are become just chess pieces in a... Malthusian eugenics game. And so you think this goes beyond just a co corporation making as much money as it can, pushing it on, on as many people as it can. You think yes. it actually goes down to, this is a modern day form of eugenics. That and and genocide, yes. And it's happening here in the U.S. as well. Yes, it is. Well, that's very uh, shocking and we'll definitely follow up with this story. Uh, very disturbing. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Right. Thank you for your time. Randy Short, President, National Spokesman. And I'm with Andrew. the Rebecca Project on Human Rights. Absolutely. All thank right, you so thank much. Thank you. All right.